One of the groomsmen named Michael is getting nervous about the wedding of his friend, and on that day, he promised himself to stay single forever. The mischievous sister of the bride named Trisha puts love powder on a wine bottle as gift for the couple. However, the boys share the wine before the wedding starts, and so when the ceremony started, everyone is shocked to see the hard-on witties of the groomsmen. After the wedding, the boys all agree that they would never marry. They later come to an agreement that they would set up a mutual fund where each of them would invest yearly and the last to stay single would get all of it. You guys are going to pay me so bad. <laughs> and so seven years later, Steve lost the bet as he got married to the mischievous Trisha in a wedding conducted by an Elvis Priest Lee. Their mutual fund has grown to 475 grand and Kyle is very excited about it. He and Michael are the only bachelors left in their group and Michael knows that the promiscuous Kyle would never be married. One night, while Michael is having a moment with his girlfriend, Shelby asks him to tell her the three words. The paranoid Michael assumes it is I love you, so he panics and asks her to leave. Shelby got mad and breaks up with him. Feeling down, Michael goes to a bar and notices a hot woman nearby. The bartender tells him that the lady is only interested in high rollers. So to impress her, Michael goes to the roulette table and bets a lot of money until he ends up owing the casino $51,000. He is later taken to the casino's boss named Carlos, who runs his business with violence. He is giving Michael one month to pay the 51 grand he owes, or something bad will happen to him. They later tell Trisha about it, and Steve's wife asks if there is someone who could help him pay it off. That's when Michael remembers the mutual fund for the last bachelor standing. However, he doubts if he could easily win it, since Kyle, being the most womanizer among them, would have marriage as the last thing in his mind. Michael immediately goes to meet him, and they talk about their vow to sleep with every woman in the world. He asks Kyle if he has ever fallen in love with a girl, and the womanizer says he came close. It was with Natalie, one of the bridesmaids at their friend's wedding. He reminisces the time they made love in Malibu, and Kyle claims that she could have been the love of his life. Michael sees a glimmer of hope as Natalie could be the key for him to win their bachelor's mutual fund. He goes to ask Trisha if she knows the whereabouts of Natalie, and Trisha gives him the address of where she usually hangs out. That evening, Michael discovers that the once modest Natalie is now a call girl. He approaches her and makes a proposal which involves a house, children, and another guy. By this, Natalie arrests him for soliciting prostitution, as she is actually an undercover cop. At the station, Michael explains that he only wants Natalie to get married to Kyle so he can win the half a million dollar mutual fund and pay off his debt. He apologizes and so Natalie lets him loose. The next day, while Michael is looking for other ways to pay off the casino, someone rings the doorbell and it is Natalie. She has considered doing his plan as long as they split the money he would win. She says she will be doing it as revenge on what Kyle did to her after the wedding. It was her first time with Kyle, but after it, the womanizer just left her on the street with just enough money to call a cab. The first thing they did is to observe Kyle and find out what kind of girls he likes. Kyle is getting intimate with the stewardess and Natalie deduces that he prefers brunette girls in uniform. When Kyle goes to the room with the stewardess, Natalie infiltrates his house. Michael comments on how attractive Natalie is without knowing that the recorder is still on. The next day, Michael asks Kyle about the women he's hooked up recently and the womanizer says that he is now attracted to cosmetics counter girls and perhaps he would like to marry one. Michael and Natalie now frequently hang out to do their spying missions, and one day, the detective gives Michael a gift. It is a pair of devil underwear, and he likes it. Natalie tells him to try the sushi, and despite Michael's protest that it disgusts him, she managed to make him eat, and so. That evening, Natalie listens to the recordings from Kyle's house. Upon hearing Michael's unintentional confession that he's attracted to her, she starts smiling. At their friend's reunion, Trisha introduces Michael to Natalie, and they both pretend not to know each other. During the meal, Trisha says the two could be perfect for each other. However, Michael panics as he imagines Natalie in her wedding gown and later having their baby. <coughs> later that night, the two take a walk, and Michael admits that he regretted not asking Natalie out after the wedding. They make a joke about it, until they start to become romantic. However, before things progress further, Michael stops and apologizes. Disappointed, Natalie leaves and tells Michael to bring Kyle to her tomorrow. Because of his promise to stay single forever, Michael convinces himself not to fall in love with Natalie, but his heart is trying to betray him as he inadvertently draws Natalie on his wall. Natalie feels the same way as she confides in her fellow detective what she feels during an operation. She asks her partner how can she push Michael to make a move, and the felon they caught advises Natalie to make the man jealous. The next day, Michael brings Kyle to the mall where Natalie is pretending to be a cosmetics counter girl. 
She starts making her move and Kyle immediately takes the bait. Michael helps him remember her and Kyle recalls that he was the one who took her V-card. The two get reacquainted until they started dating and Michael gets left behind. Kyle brings Natalie to his house and Michael spies outside, hoping that Natalie would call off their mission and leave Kyle. However, Natalie breaks the microphone and closes the curtain so Michael could not see what would happen. He starts freaking out on what Kyle might do, but the reality is that Natalie left the womanizer hanging. The next day, Natalie meets with Michael and she confesses that she has fallen for Kyle as she finds him actually sweet. Michael tries to dissuade her, but Natalie says that they are in love with each other. She asks Michael if he loves anyone. I guess not. Disappointed, Natalie immediately leaves. Michael later convinces himself in front of the mirror that heartbreak does not affect him. To prove this, he challenges himself that he would make love with the first woman he will see. Upon seeing the naive-looking librarian named Jill, Michael immediately uses his womanizing skills to take her out. He walks her home after their date, and as they reach her house, the sweet librarian invites him inside where she introduces Michael to her granny. Moments later, the two starts getting intimate in her bedroom. However, Jill suddenly handcuffs him to the bed and closes the curtain. The sweet and naive librarian turns out to be a really bad girl and Michael now regrets the position he is in. Moments later, the granny also joins the party. The next day, Michael asks Kyle if he's already dumped Natalie and the womanizer says he didn't because he finds her special. Kyle later says that he feels something wrong with his left testicle. They later have it checked by a doctor and they find out that Kyle has cancer. The doctor says that his left testicles should be removed or he could die. After the operation, Kyle tells Michael that he wants to bring his testicles home. The nurses wouldn't allow it, so he asks Michael to take it from the hospital storage. Michael managed to sneak in the storage room, but then he accidentally drops the container and Kyle's gonads go rolling outside until it lands on the doctor's table at the cafeteria. <laughs> With nothing to bring back to his friend, Michael decides to take a walnut as replacement for Kyle's nut. He gives it to him, and the naive Kyle is happy to see his own walnut. One night, Carlos calls Michael to remind him that he's got three days left to pay off his debt. The next day, he meets with the couple and Kyle says Natalie already told him everything. He thanks Michael for bringing back to him the love of his life. During dinner, Kyle claims that Natalie changed him and now he is ready to take it to the next level. He kneels to the detective to propose and Natalie says yes without hesitation. Michael, who's gonna win the mutual fund, will lose the girl of his dreams. He confides to Steve his regret of introducing Natalie to Kyle, claiming that for the first time, he felt something real with her. Steve advises him to tell Natalie about it, but Michael says she is in love with Kyle. Steve comments that perhaps Kyle has already changed. However, Kyle's bachelor's party is filled with women, and he tells Michael that after his marriage, he would still continue sleeping around, and Natalie would just be his baby maker. Steve congratulates Michael because he will be winning the half a million dollar mutual fund, but Michael says he won't because he will stop the wedding. However, a bowling ball hits his head, causing him to faint. The next day, Michael wakes up late, so he rushes to the venue where Kyle and Natalie's wedding ceremony is still ongoing. However, when he reaches the place, well, the stop the wedding! Michael finds the bouquet and realizes that the wedding was already over, so he goes home defeated. Later that night, he settles his debt with the casino. Carlos asks how he got the money, and Michael responds that he has sold his soul. Days later, Michael sees Kyle with another woman, so he confronts him. Kyle punches him, saying that he and Natalie tricked him. Michael says he has no idea what he is talking about, so Kyle explains to him what happened. On their wedding night, Natalie asks Kyle if he still remembers what happened in Malibu. The husband just smiles and Natalie knocks him out, and on the next day, he just found out that their marriage was already annulled and he could no longer find Natalie. Michael says sorry for him, but Kyle says he's happy because he can get more women now than ever. He says that he is now dating a red-headed librarian. Upon realizing that it is Jill, Michael says that she could be the perfect woman for her. That evening, Michael finds Natalie working again as an undercover call girl. He gives her the bouquet and explains that he tried to stop their wedding, but he was late. He makes a proposal about a life together involving a house and kids, to which Natalie laughs. And a few weeks later, the two finally get married. Meanwhile, Kyle is seen being handcuffed to the bed while the librarian and her grandma gives him the spanking he deserves. Oh! Did you like our movie recap? Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. To be updated for new movie recaps, hit the notification bell.